Hello and thank you for joining us for our Why Creative presentation and also for joining us for this summer school online workshop series. It's great to see that you've, you've signed up to join us. We do have lots of workshops available. So if you've not been on the website recently, do head over there and check out all of the workshops that we have running. You are able to sign up to as many as you like. So make sure that you, uh, you book on to as many as you can. And do remember as well that as part of the series, you are eligible to get your official certificate that says that you have been a member of the workshops. In order to get that, however, you do just have to have attended at least six workshops. You do have to just send us some outcomes over as well for at least three of those workshops. Now, this presentation is all about exploring the creative opportunities and the creative careers that are out there. And also, what we're hoping to do is to show you some of the top reasons, some of the many reasons as to why we believe that studying a creative career at, uh, studying a creative course at university and going into a creative career is one of the best routes for any creative to take. Arguably, probably one of the best routes that anyone could take. Uh, my name is Sam. I am a film and moving image production graduate from Norwich University of the Arts, and I'm now based within the student recruitment and outreach team here, alongside my colleague, Tom. Hello, yes, my name's Tom Rullett. I'm part of the recruitment team as well, and I'm a fine art graduate from NUA. Perfect, so together, we're gonna to walk you through uh, the top tips that we mentioned and uh, walk you through the presentation today. But firstly, I'm gonna start with a rather bold image and a very bold quote, which is, without creatives, you would be standing naked alone in a field. Now, this perfectly summarizes the importance of the creative sector, creative education, and all of those creatives within that. Without designers, artists, creative thinkers, makers, creative problem solvers, the world would be a much colder, much less exciting place. And I think many people would enjoy being like this guy stood in a field. Now, I mean, everything around us is inspired and built and designed by a creative practitioner. From the clothes we wear to our houses, our technology, all of our laptops, phones, all of the apps that we use on those devices, everything from transport through to hospital equipment, our schools, our colleges, all of the films and all of those many, many TV series that we've been binge watching in lockdown, they've all been designed and made by a creative practitioner. So it's everywhere. Creative practice is integrated into every industry and is often essential to their performance and to their success. Now, the creative industries are a massive economic asset to the UK economy. I'd like you just to have a quick think about how much you think they actually provide and how much they generate for the UK. You might be thinking maybe one million pounds. It's a lot of, lot of money, but it's not quite close. Um, maybe even a billion pounds. Even still, you're not quite close enough. There's actually around 111 billion pounds that is generated by the creative sector in the UK. It's a massive amount. And it actually works out to be around 11.5 million pounds an hour, which is massive and goes some way to show why the, the creative sector is one of the fastest, one of the most rapidly growing and expanding industries that we have. Now within the creative sector, there are also a lot of people that contribute and build into that wealth. Within the UK, there are over 3 million creative jobs alone. In the East Anglia region, where Norwich University of the Arts is based, there's around a quarter of a million. And in Norfolk and Suffolk alone, there's around 33,000. So even close to our creative campus and very much on our doorstep, there are lots of creative, creative opportunities that students, graduates and creative practitioners can get involved with. There's actually 
around one in 11 jobs in the UK that is a creative one. Thanks, Sam. So at Norwich University of the Arts, we have currently 19 different subject areas and they cover two different faculties. So the first one is arts and media. Within this, we've got a variety of courses, including acting, animation, animation and visual effects, film and moving image production, fine art, games art and design, photography and games development. In our second faculty, we, which is titled architecture and design, we have architecture, design for publishing, fashion, fashion communication and promotion, fashion marketing and business, graphic communication, graphic design, illustration, interior design, textile design, and user experience design. Now that's quite a long list. It's really worth going onto the website and having a look at each individual course page to get an idea of what each of those different types of students get up to. And you can see the different types of work they make, you can meet the academics on there, and get a feel for that kind of three or four year breakdown of what they get up to during their studies. So what jobs do these lead to? As part of our role at NUA, we go up and down the country and we tell people about the, the value of creativity as we are doing now. And it's always surprising as to what people think creativity can or can't lead to. A lot of people just wonder, you know, well, I, with my creativity, I could probably be an artist or an art teacher, but, but is there anything else beyond that? And actually the answer is yes. There's over 170 jobs that we've listed on this page alone. And this kind of just, just kind of starts to scratch the surface of what you could go into with each of these areas that we're offering, or each of our subjects can lead to. Some of them you might have heard of before. You probably have an idea of what an architect gets up to, but then you've probably never heard of things like in the visual effects industry, like being a roto artist, or you might have never heard of going into the film industry and being a rigger, or you not, might have never heard of things like, what does an art handler do? If, if, if you graduate from fine art and you, you're interested in that sort of area, what do they get up to? What does an art therapist do? There's so many things here for you to discover and to explore a bit further. So please have a look online, do a bit of a, a Google search into these different types of roles and careers that you might be interested in. It's not just about the making skills though. It's not just about understanding how to use a bit of software or how to use a, a certain technical resource. It's actually really important for you to understand the value of the transferable skills that you'll be learning as part of your course. There's a variety of skills here. There's 10 key skills on screen now that the creative industries have indicated to us as being the really key things they're looking for in graduates. This includes resilience, an ability to meet deadlines and deliver a brief, be flexible and adaptable, show an attention to detail, communicate well with colleagues and partners, uh, respond well to feedback, work well in a team, handle customers and clients, demonstrate a positive attitude, and be able to interpret a brief in a unique and distinctive way. These are really kind of key skills to a variety of different career paths, whether you're working in the creative industries or in another sector. Now, at NUA, we have had some really great alumni who have gone on to some very varied, very exciting opportunities. We've got a few examples of those people here for you now. So people such as Joe, who was actually a student on the games art and design course with us, but upon graduating realized that he had a real passion for the visual effects industry, particularly that uh, within film, uh, within the film industry. Now, Joe uh, was able to take his creative skill set and his transferable skills and adapt them to fit this, this industry. And as such, he has worked on some incredible projects ranging from Pete's Dragon to Dunkirk. And he's also worked on films such as the Fantastic Beasts films and will also be uh, sort of showing off some of his work in the upcoming Wonder Woman 1984 film. Another good example of one of our recent graduates is Jess, Jess Nash, who is an illustrator and is now working as a freelance illustrator, working on recent projects such as a really great Penguin Books poster campaign, as well as running workshops for art uh, organizations, museums, colleges, schools. And one workshop that she's worked on recently has been very topical and really engaged with a wide audience, which was around the Windrush generation. 
So another couple of graduates we'd like to talk about are people like Emily. So Emily is a fine art graduate. She graduated a couple of years below me and she's one of my friends. And she started off her career by basically setting up her own company alongside one of her course mates. That is a, basically a paper cutting company uh, where she designed bespoke cards and she managed to sell those in some of the, the top galleries in England and in the States. Now, Emily loved that, but she wanted to explore her creativity in other ways. So she last year started to launch her kind of her painting career. And she now um, paints on these large scale canvases, like you can see in the images. And she's, she's very good at not just creating and doing things quite quickly, but also at networking. And she knows how to work social media well. So she actually earned around 100K last year through her practice alone. It just goes to show that you don't have to be a struggling artist if you want to be a creative practitioner. And this is Amy. So Amy graduated a few years ago as well, and she was really interested in mathematics and graphics. She was really concerned when she went to university that she'd have to say goodbye to her, her love for maths because she went and studied graphic design at NUA. But actually, towards the end of her time at university, she realised that she wanted to go into a user experience sort of direction. Um, so now she's a senior UX consultant at a company called Foolproof, which are actually right next to the university. And she works for brands like Suzuki, the post office, Domino's Pizza, and a variety of other kind of really high profile clients on designing their websites and apps and making sure that the user experience is a really pleasurable and inviting experience that users want to come back to. And it's a very lucrative industry. So here we have a, a wider range of some of the more recent and more well-known graduates and alumni of Nard University of the Arts. People such as Megan, Megan Grinham, who won the recent Children in Need uh, T-shirt design competition. You can see her work there on the screen. That competition was in partnership with George and with Graduate Fashion Week. And as a result of winning, uh, Megan was actually able to go on and do an internship with George. And after that, was able to go on to do an internship with H&M in Stockholm. We've also got some really great photography work here from Lee Kirby, who was headhunted during his second year to do the album cover for London Grammar. Now, both of those examples really go to show how, how great it is when students are able to submit their work to competitions, to find work placements, and to, to sort of get out there and show off their skills to employers, not just as graduates, but during their time studying with us. Students even in their first, second and third year could be picked up and find employment based on the work they are producing. A couple of these that I'm really excited about are ones like um, Keith Chapman's work, the designer of Bob the Builder and Rory the Racing Car. Perhaps our most, I guess, um, the, the biggest accolade that one of our graduates has won in, in, in recent years is um, an Oscar and that was done by Stuart Craig who was the set designer for the Harry Potter and the Fantastic Beast films and even worked on the theme park the Harry Potter theme park in the States. So this slide goes to show a variety of different kind of industry connections that we have. Each of these logos represents an internship or a work placement or a live brief or maybe it's a, a visiting lecturer from that industry. And this is something that evolves each year. This is something that we add to each year. And behind each of these is a story, of course. One that I particularly like is uh, the one of Disney Pixar. Disney Pixar picked up one of our graduates after they spotted them, they headhunted them for winning a, a basically a BAFTA for a, a computer game they developed called TikTok Toys. Another one I quite like is one that's a bit more continuous. Um, Kath Kitson have one of our graduates called Sally Wood. She's now a senior designer at Kath Kitson and she comes in and teaches on our textiles course from time to time. Okay, and some really other good sort of opportunities that students have had recently were with companies such as Vivian Westwood, where one of our fashion communication and promotion students actually secured a uh, work placement during their time studying with us and that was able to support and help develop their final project. We've also got really good links with 
uh, a more recent development or more recent company, which is October Studios. And now they are based uh, in North Norfolk, so quite close to our campus. And they are a production studio, studio working on primarily a lot of American TV productions. One of our recent students, one of our recent graduates, went on to work with them, but they are really great at allowing students to get some work experience, whether it be with editing, set design, uh, or other areas of film production. Now, if after hearing what we've had to sort of um, share with you, uh, you are thinking that maybe a creative course in the future is the right thing for you. Now, there are a few entry requirements uh, as a result that we would be looking for. We won't go through all, all of them right, right now, just because there are so many out there and so many different options that you, you could be taking. But some of the more common courses that we would see would be things such as A-levels, for which we'd be looking for free Bs. Uh, we also do accept quite a few of the, the various diplomas, such as the UAL Level 3 Extended Diploma and the Foundation Diploma as well. Now, we do try to interview all of the applicants that we, we get before the application deadline. What this means is even if you don't quite hit the entry requirements uh, and you don't quite get the grades that we are asking for, you could still be offered a place. Now, this is typically based upon a strong portfolio of work. And that portfolio is a very important aspect of applying because it's what really shows us your skills, your abilities, and really what shows us how unique you are and your unique take on a particular practice, and why you would be suitable for the course you're inter interviewing for as a result. So there's a variety of ways that you can get in touch with us from here. So if you want to find out more, see what's going on in our community, you can follow our hashtag, we're NUA. You might want to get in touch with us directly, though, by just uh, emailing us at student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk. And finally, do come and have a look at our summer school workshop series. There's a variety of different workshops, some that are hands on making, others that are more digitally orientated. They'll be so useful for you to get an idea of what you might be interested in in the future, but also those things that you, you, you're curious about right now, but actually you want to be able to rule out as well. We'd love to see you there. That's great. And thanks again for joining us for this presentation. And as Tom says, we hope that we get to see you soon in some of our workshops. Thank you.